Welcome to AAPC Social Hour for April 26, 2023. We are a month out from HealthCon. And I have my friends Stephanie Tam and Lisa Livingston from the National Advisory Board with me. Hey, guys. Hi. Good afternoon. Hello, well, everyone. Uh, it's still morning for me in Salt Lake. Stephanie, where are you? I'm in Providence, Rhode Island. Okay. And Lisa? I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. Um, Lisa, how close are you to Opryland and HealthCon, the mm. HealthCon venue? Drive time is about an hour. Okay. All right. So will you be, I guess you'll probably be staying on site with us. Yes, that would be correct. Okay. All right. Well, we have our members joining us, Natasha Timberlake. She won some ghost tour tickets for HealthCon. So congrats to Natasha. Yeah, we did a little impromptu contest in the group last week. Um, and Natasha won a pair of those. So Natasha, when uh, we're when we're in Nashville, you got to say hi to us. We'd love to uh, put a face to your profile pic, which we've seen for like the last year or two. So it'll be fun to get to meet you. Um, we have, we oh boy, um, it's old, we have Tanya, for, who is also from Tennessee. Tanya, Tanya Noel Faust. Tanya, will you be attending HealthCon? Will we see you there? If not, or I, whether you're attending or not, let us know where you're from in Tennessee. Maybe your neighbors with Lisa Livingston and you didn't even know it. Tara Carpenter, good to see you. Thanks for being with us today. Um, and I'm going to attempt this name and I apologize, but, um, uh, Nadej, uh, thanks for being with us today. Um, we have the orange slash urban, uh, AAPC chapter with us. And I kind of feel like that might, uh, be lady Martinez. Is that true? Are you hiding behind your chapter, uh, profile there? Um, let's see here, Beverly. West Tennessee, Beverly Johnson. You guys know Beverly? I do not, but do not. maybe I'll meet some of these people locally and can get active in some of the local chapters. That's right. Beverly is on uh, a, a new appointee to the board of directors, AAPCCA board of directors. Um, we've got Kate Wagar from Pennsylvania. Um, and yeah. Thanks so much for everybody for joining us today. Uh, lots of oh, Atin Lamsell from Nashville, uh, and we'll uh, we'll be attending conference in May. So looking forward to meet you, meeting you there, Atin. Uh, so, uh, so Lisa, how is the weather in Tennessee and Nashville these days? Is it warming up? It is warming up. It's a little cool this week, but hopefully temperatures will be back up to the high seventies next in the next couple of weeks. Okay, so by the time we hit conference, I could I could pack some shorts and be okay. It will yes, it will not. <laughs> there there's not going to be a lot of humidity yet. It should be very nice weather. All right, and do you go to to this area that? that I, I don't know um, Nashville, Lisa. Do you do you go there to um, the Opryland area? I guess that means drag there and um, and just hang out, go have dinner, things like that. Yes, um, actually, I've been a Middle Tennessee person all of my life. So Opryland used to be a theme park, and that was like the hot place for everyone to go. It was country music, you're in Nashville, and they had all these rides similar to what Dollywood has now. And so several years ago, the park closed and they did the Opryland Hotel. And I have been there, I've stayed there for an AAPC meeting and it is a wonderful place. There's so many sites to see, there's so many places to eat. And just down the road, literally like five to 10 minutes, there's a big mall called Opry Mills. So it's a, it's a very busy area traffic wise, but it is a very, very nice area for us to be meeting. I'm very excited. Probably 10, 15, 20 minutes from downtown. Okay. And is it, um, is it a good place, our hotel, a good place to be able to walk around and check out a lot of different things in the area? 
well, you'll be able to check out everything at the hotel. It, it, I mean, it, it's quite it's huge. Yeah. yeah, the mall would be the closest thing, but nothing's really in walking distance. Okay. All right. All right. And last question. I, I'm this. I'm being selfish, Lisa. I need to know, like, as a, a Nashville native, where do you um, or where do you, where do you hope to visit when you're down there? Oh, like, I is there a to... restaurant or anything that you want to check out? Well, I hope to go shopping. So I'm looking for the Coach Outlet and the um, Michael Kors Outlet. And I want to go to a couple of the stores to look for some new clothes. So I'm going to be shopping. <laughs> I'm going to be shopping when I have any downtime. I love it. Okay. All right. Uh, Stephanie, have you been to Nashville? I have. I actually went there for a bachelor party. So <laughs> it was a different vibe. From yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you you know where to have a good time. <laughs> well, a lot of bars and the yeah. fried chicken is really good there. All different Love types it. of rubs. Fried, and... Did you say fried chicken? Yeah. <laughs> well, we're also known for Nashville hot chicken, so that is a very popular thing. But once you get down to Broadway, which is down Second Avenue, Broadway, where Stephanie's talking about, that's all the restaurants and the bars and all the party buses go up and down. So um, if, if they're a country music singer, they probably have a restaurant named after them. <laughs> right. I think I went to, was it Jason Aldean? I think he had a multiple levels. Of oh, everything's wow. multiple level. Two, yeah. three-story restaurants. A lot of them have rooftop patios <laughs> and there's live music going on at all times during the day down there. I love that. I love the live music. And each floor you go to is different types of genre of music. So if you don't yes. like the oh, wow. floor, just go to the second one or the third that's, one. That's correct. They have different, they have different um, types of music on each floor, depending on what your favorite is. Right. All right. I can't wait. And I, I know that for one of the evenings of conference, we'll be busing every attendee to some some party place for us to go hang out and um, th that'll be a great end to a day where you can just unwind and, and network and um, get to know each other a little bit more so good looking forward to that and let's see here um, let us know in the comments if you're attending so I know a few of us uh, three of you are um, love to see you there and um, so I guess we're we're about a month away, maybe just a little bit um, uh, under a month away from from uh, meeting up in Nashville. All right. Well, you guys are on the National Advisory Board. Yeah. And I think you are you both. This is your second year on the board. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. OK. All and right. Let me say it has and, gone by. Yeah. It's a four year uh, assignment. Is that right? Three. Three. Oh, okay. Time flies by no, so quickly. Yeah, three, right? <laughs> so, are we in your second year? Like at the end of this year, it will be the end of your second well, year, and then you have next, one more year next year as well. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. And tell us what um, what have you learned about being on the national advisory board? Like, is there anything? Uh, is there anything that had, uh, you've thought? Wow, I didn't know that. APC operates like this, operates like this, or um, there's something that maybe got you by surprise in a positive way. Well, I can speak to that. I have just been impressed with every level of being part of this national advisory board, being part of a small local chapter, you know, we kind of struggle to get speakers and to get people to come out for the meetings. And I had no idea how many resources AAPC has to offer local chapters to help them be successful at that level. And I just wish I had known that at the time because I would definitely have reached out to, to find speakers and to find ways to give incentives to the local chapter member, but that's the biggest thing I have learned is how proactive AAPC is in trying to get these things planned out and everything that they offer as far as their benefits at the local level. I just was not tapping into it as a local officer and I wish I had known that. That would have made my life a yeah. lot easier. Yeah, yeah, thanks for sharing, Lisa, that's great. Stephanie, how about yourself? Anything come to your mind? 
Yeah, I was just thinking how I really appreciate how the National Advisory Board, all, all our members, um, we listen to all our members when they provide feedback and we bring that up to the National Advisory Board so we can influence some change or just if they are if AAPC headquarters is trying to make a change or change it for the better or for worse, um, just providing that feedback, listening to our officers, to our members, what do they want us to do moving forward? Like try to guide that um, that way, path forward. Yeah. You guys are our eyes and ears in the industry as, um, as professionals and as uh, someone who has gone through um, our exam process, you know, as, as students, as professionals, and um, as evolving professionals yourself to, to help us know which direction um, we need to go as an organization, how we can best serve our members. So do you feel like uh, the time commitment, did it meet your expectations? And I'm, I'm really priming the pump for all these future NAB members who are watching. Uh, was, is the time commitment a lot or is it, did it kind of meet your expectations uh, or maybe not as much as you thought to so let me know what do you think Lisa well I think um, I think it met my expectations I think everyone was real clear in the beginning as to how much time it would take I think the problem for me was I had taken a new job as well the year prior to that so I had a whole learning curve with a new job and then also the NAB um, having to do everything that I committed to for that but this year seems to be going good for me. I, you know, the first year there was a lot of time learning from the previous board members, what we need to do and how we need to do that. And I feel like this year I'm very much more prepared to go out and rally the teams for AAPC. Okay, awesome. Stephanie, how about yourself time-wise with the commitment? Yeah. Um, I think the time commitment is what I expected. Like Lisa said, they were very upfront with it in the beginning about how much time, what the expectations are. Um, I also sit on the membership committee with Lisa, um, but I'm the co-chair um, alongside with Stephanie at the barge. So that takes a little more time because I have to prepare the agenda and discuss what we're gonna be discussing that week. Um, but also one of the responsibilities as a National Advisory Board member is presenting to our local chapters. It could be on, about anything. Um, one of the most popular ones that we do present on is the making the most of your membership. And um, that presentation really goes really well with the chapters because they're like, wow, I didn't know that we, with your AAPC membership, you get all these benefits. Um, so that's always a presentation that we're always happy to present to your local chapter or to anybody who wants to listen to us. <laughs> yes, that's awesome. I love it. Now, uh, Patty Bassa, she reached out to me about a week ago asking about CEUs for a specialty certification, the specialty certification, the CIRCC. And um, she just mentioned in the comments here, please work on getting more CIRCC CEUs approved through APC instead of expensive vendors. And um, I guess to, just to start on that, because Stephanie, you, you've talked about uh, member benefits and we do offer, um, a free CEUs. Like if you just have the, if you have the CPC certification, you should be able to get all of your CEUs for free within your um, um, CEU period. But for specialty certifications like Patty's, do you guys have any thoughts on how someone, um, how to navigate through that? I don't know if you guys hold additional certifications beyond the CPC. So I also hold the CPCO, which is the Certified Professional Compliance Officer, since I'm into compliance. Um, for me, I also earn CEUs by like attending the, by completing the Healthcare Business Monthly Magazine quizzes um, that's attached to each monthly magazine. There's also four free member webinars um, that are available on the AAPC website. So those are on demand. Whenever you have time, you can just watch those webinars. After you complete watching those webinars, you can just um, it'll produce the index number or your earn to see you that way. Um, and then for the CPCO, um, I attend my, a lot of my local chapter meetings. Um, I'm also the president of my local chapter, um, but sometimes there are like compliance related topics that are qualified for the CPCO CEUs as well. Do you feel like it's difficult to find 
um, CEUs for your specialty certification, Stephanie? I haven't had any difficulty. Okay. Maybe it's just um, specific to the CIRCC right now. You know, Patty's just mentioning that. Lisa, do you have any thoughts on that? I am also, I hold a second certification of CPMA for an auditor. And so for me, a lot of the free benefits that the four webinars a year, the magazine articles each month, a lot of those apply to both my CPC, my core certification, as well as my specialty certification. Um, so she might just want to make sure that some of the things that she's doing, they may cross over and actually cover both her core and her specialty certifications. Okay. She put a little bit more information in the comments and Patty, you know, just like we mentioned offline, I, I sent your concern up the chain and um, I'm going to reach back out and see if I can find more information. So I'll be connecting with you um, later, Patty. Uh, give me a week or so and I'll see what other information I can find. But uh, Kathy Heffel asks, how do you get free CEUs? And Stephanie and Lisa have talked about this a little bit. So there are four quarterly webinars or they aren't really quarterly anymore. We just have four webinars that are for free on the APC website. If you go into your member account and look up the, the free resources or go into the free resources area, you can find, um, find those. And then Stephanie mentioned healthcare business monthly. You can get a free CEU every month by taking that quiz. Um, if you buy AAPC code books, you can earn free CEUs. Um, okay. I oh, about chapter that. That's, an, yes, that's that. an easy way to get CEUs. Yes, yes. So um, as I think many of you know, uh, for, for local chapter meetings, you can attend any virtual chapter meeting and earn CEUs from that, uh, from attending that um, presentation. Um, but also we highly encourage you to attend your personal local chapter meeting in your area if you have one close by. And um, those are that's those are great ways to earn your free CEUs. I hope this helps you out. And um, you should be able, if you are a CPC holder, you should be able, Kathy, to get all of your CEUs for free. The trick is you have to stay on it. If you wait till a month before your CEUs are due, you're going to be in trouble. It's going to be tough and you'll be thinking, I need to buy presentations to watch to do that. Um, Mania, I hope I said that right, Mania Smith. She has asked, how do you access the free CEUs from the code books? Uh, you will receive, as a code book purchaser, uh, later in the year, in uh, late summer, fall, I, I believe that's the time frame, but we send an email to all those who purchased APC code books. And that has a link to our learning portal where, that will allow you to take uh, a little informational quiz. I, I, I don't want to call it a quiz because it's not going to um, challenge your competency of getting around APC code books, but it's just um, our way of being able to um, get you those CEUs. It might ask a few simple questions, but so look for that email. If you don't see it um, by, I'd say August, um, connect with our customer service department and they will be able to um, guide you along on that. So, oh, and you said you purchased your code books last June. Um, Man Mania, Mania, um, you may want to just contact customer service now and see if they can help you out and help you navigate through that and get you those um, CEUs. All right. Okay, let's see. We have some great feedback. Um, thanks uh, to those who are kind of helping out with with uh, the CEU question. It seems like the CIRCC CEUs are some of the hardest to get, and we'll all look into that. Um, Kate asks, what if books are ordered through your work? Um, I believe you'd need to um, talk with your employer about that. Uh, I'm going to look into that. And Kate, I would also recommend you reach out to our customer service and just ask, hey, are my employer bought the books? How do how can I earn those CEUs? I don't think 
I think only one person would be able to earn the CEUs, but there might be more restrictions or information on that. So you just want to um, connect with our customer service and they can guide you through that. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Um, not, that's a great benefit of buying AEPC code books. Um, you all use them. Um, I've heard great things about them, but we're going to jump now because we've talked a lot about CEUs and there are so many great member benefits, guys. Um, Stephanie, prior to going live, I asked you what we, I asked. I said we might be talking about this, about some of your favorite member benefits. Uh, and you mentioned one, Stephanie. Um, tell us about the, the one that you brought up. Yeah, um, the member, there is a member professional development library, which um, is free for all members. Um, you can access it by logging to your AAPC account. I believe Alex is going to put the link out there if you're interested in accessing it. So unfortunately, you don't earn CEUs by watching these courses, but they're still really great courses to take. They're for your soft skills or developing your soft skills. So there's courses on like time um, like time management, customer service, uh, building up your leadership skills, um, how to answer the telephone, um, how to de-escalate a patient who's angry maybe on the other side of the phone. Um, just really great courses to help you grow professionally and you're building your leadership skills. And you also earn, you have 25 free vouchers to take whichever courses you like to take. And then those vouchers renew every single year. Um, there's about four pages of courses to choose from. Uh, so it's really just check it out if you haven't checked it out already. I'm looking in that library right now. The first one that came up is humor, sarcasm, and conflict. I need to watch that because <laughs> sometimes my sarcasm isn't taken the right way and I just need to zip it. Shouldn't even go down that path. Um, but I, I I'm looking at this uh, and seeing great tools for maybe someone who hasn't um, who hasn't worked in a, in an office setting. You know, a student who's looking to be a coder and maybe just wants to um, maybe uh, sharpen their saw on their um, professional skills. You know, communication and, and Stephanie, as you mentioned, time management and things like that. Yeah, I think there's also one course on like email etiquette. So if you're maybe not used to writing professional emails or in a work setting, um, not because email is not just like texting. Um, so there's a course on that as well. Yes, I see one on finding your passion at work, developing your daily routine. Lisa, as a coder, well, first let's start with this. Are you are you a coder? Period, or do you do auditing or other things, Lisa? I am. Um, I am. I've got um, a nursing backgrounds, and had the opportunity to get into billing and coding, and then from there liked it so much that I decided to go down the compliance track. And I actually work for the state of Tennessee and do. I actually am a consultant at the state to review fraud cases that. They're, when they're looking at an investigator with what they have billed, I actually do coding audits for them and in, in reporting on what my findings are. So, do you, when you stepped into your current role, did you create your own routine or was was it kind of set up where you just stepped into it and and just kind of went with um, the structure that was already there? There was no structure there, so. Um, you know, that was a new role that they, we, we have three nurses that work for the state. And so we've been carving that role out as we go, which is, that's a good thing in my opinion, because we kind of set the tone for how we move forward when new, when new coders come in. So it, it's been real, it, okay. it's been a very different job. And I think the last, so I've been a nurse for 34 years. I've been a coder biller for probably 12 years now. And, you know, the last 10 to 12 years is really what got me the experience to go into the position that I am in now. And I, I love what I do every day. I'm very passionate about my job. 
And that's that is um, one of the topics in the course in the courses that Stephanie shared with us. And I did put a link in the comments. So if you want to check those out, I encourage you to. Stephanie, how about yourself? Tell me about your role and um, and was a routine set up or did you kind of make it your, your own? So I started as like a front desk receptionist and then I moved to like medical assistant. Uh, so I was always in the healthcare field, love helping patients and just being part of all, working with doctors. That was like always my passion. Um, now, and then I had the opportunity to go into compliance and do a little bit of auditing as well, like Lisa. Uh, but now compliance is just my passion. I help multiple states build effective compliance programs, um, help their doctors, their practice managers. Um, and there wasn't really like a day-to-day -day guideline. Um, I mostly kind of built my own as well. Like first thing is like checking your emails, seeing what new rules or regulations are in place. Um, like one of the things is like the public health emergency that's ending soon. So what is that entailed? So we'll be spending the next couple of weeks looking into what those guidelines are going to be. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and All right. That's awesome. Now, oh, go ahead, Lisa. The healthcare industry is ever changing. So just because the regulations say this today, they could be different tomorrow. So a lot of it for me is probably with Stephanie is we just have to work really hard at keeping up with all of the changes. No, definitely. Yeah, like one day the Supreme Court, Supreme Court can overturn something and changes our whole thing. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's a challenge, or maybe some coders, I think, or, or professionals on this side of um, healthcare, they relish it is that constant change, constant investigation to try to make things work and keeping that puzzle put together. I and think I'm where do you fit? Okay, I was gonna ask, where do you fit into that? So you love, love that, Lisa? I do, I love that aspect. Okay. Yeah, no, every day is different. So you don't know, like I could have a mindset of like, okay, I'll do these things off my to-do list today. And then when I go and it's like totally something else, I can, I don't do any of those things. <laughs> Looking through the catalog of the per professional development courses um, uh, leads me to think or wonder who watching this broadcast are our student coders or maybe just received their CPCA and are looking for their first job. So if you're a student coder or new, um, a newly certified member, let us know in the comments um, and let us, let us know what questions you might have. This is a great community. I mean, Elisa and Stephanie know this stuff inside and out and we've got a great community watching that can help you out as well but there are two courses in the professional development library that i would encourage you to watch and i need to um uh share these more in our facebook group but there's how to network which is huge for those who are looking for their first job and um I guess, you know, trying to get over those fears that we might have of, I don't know why we make such a big deal out of it sometimes, but we just do, a, I'm included in that, just to say hi and, and start a conversation and get to know others. And then what do you do with that relationship after, you know, after you leave, how do you stay connected? I think that's what, how to network well. And then there is a, this course, how to, perf um, let me see, let me click into it. How to project a professional image. Let's see. And I, I, the complete titles cut off. I can't see the whole thing, but I think it's how to protect a professional image in a workplace. And this is something we've talked a lot about, you guys, Lisa and Stephanie, just your image and how you portray yourself expands beyond your office. It goes into how you behave in the social media group and the APC Facebook groups and um, your LinkedIn profile, all of those things. Um, do you have any thoughts about, about um, your projecting a professional image, Stephanie? Yeah, like you, you mentioned Alex about your social profile. Um, like if you have an Instagram or you're on Facebook, make sure that is very professional. Um, watch your comments as well. Um, you don't want to be derogative or um, demeaning in any way. So always 
um, be mindful of what you say or post on there. Um, also, if you're attending like conference or your local chapter meeting in person, um, make sure that you dress professionally, not like um, unprofessional, since you are meeting new possibly co coworkers or uh, colleagues and you're just meeting professionals in the field. Yes, Lisa, do you have thoughts? Well, post pandemic, a lot of people are working remotely. So I, I do work remotely a majority of the time. So for me personally, I get up every day as if I'm gonna go to the office and I try to do my professional clothes. I, I put my makeup on, I do my hair, even though I'm gonna be home all day, any meeting that I'm sitting in, I want to give that professional image to the people that I'm meeting with. And as far as social platforms, just be respectful of others. I mean, that that's just a good rule and it's not too hard to do. So just be respectful of everyone out there. Yes, constructive criticism is a good thing. Just choose your words wisely. We want to be a, uh, a community of, of lifters and supporters of, of everyone in their career path. Valerie Dorn says, I'm a student taking Path pathophysiology now. So Valerie, your student, are you a coder right now? Or um, tell us a little bit more about, about your journey and where you're at right now. Uh, Beverly Johnson says APC helped her come out of her shell. That's what I, one thing I, I mean, of the many things I love about APC is there's so many opportunities for you to be a, a leader, an expert, in, in your um, in your specialty in what you do. Stephanie, how's how's APC helped you with that? Um, Here you are as a member of the NAB, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Did you yeah, I, I mean I guess you you could start by just saying like telling us what led you down this path to be a national leader for this organization. Yeah, I mean, I started as a local chapter e-board officer. So first I was vice president and I moved up to president. But really why I got into the leadership role was because I wanted to give back to my community and help out and help others get certified, um, share what my tips were when I studied um, and just give back to the community. Uh, so then when I had the opportunity to join the National Advisory Board, I was so excited that this opportunity I could help on a higher level um, with addition to still supporting my local chapter as well. Uh, so, and just the people that I meet on the board, on the local chapters, in the community, it's just so rewarding. Um, everybody all has the same mission, and same goal in life. Um, so it's very, it's very nice to be with this group of people. That's awesome. I love that. And uh, Lisa, how about yourself? How has APC helped you grow in your career? And, and what led you to this opportunity to be on the National Advisory Board? Well, I would e echo everything Stephanie said. I was, you know, I became part of AAPC, then I was an officer for two years. I started out as education officer, and then the second year I was secretary treasurer. With my new role, I have to have, it's part of its speaking roles and doing presentations. So being part of the NAB, we are surrounded with some of the best experts in the industry. And for me, I am the mentee. I, I'm wanting to learn from them um, how to do the presentations and how to put myself out there. I, I wouldn't say I'm shy, but I'm a little bit hesitant. And one of the reasons I did the NAB experience is so that I could feel more comfortable in that role. And I would say Stephanie has seen me for now almost two years, and I think I'm much more comfortable now than I was when I started. But sometimes it takes a little bit. I have to work really hard at getting myself out there. So that, that's one way that being part of the National Advisory Board has helped me. Do you guys speak at local chapter meetings? Is that part of your assignment? Yes. I would love to speak at local chapter meetings, although I, I haven't been able to connect with many here in Middle Tennessee just because I'm, I'm new to this area. So I guess I'm putting it out there right now for anyone 
who might need a speaker, I, I would be available to be a virtual speaker for sure. And then I would like to become more involved at the local level. So if you're from Middle Tennessee or anywhere within this vicinity, reach out to me and I'll be happy to be a speaker. I'll be happy to proctor exams. I'll be happy to support you in however I can. Yes, awesome. <laughs> Excuse me, Lisa, what are, what are your topics of specialty that you, uh, that you like to speak about? Well, I just did a, a meet. I just did a virtual meeting for the Kingsport local chapter, and we talked about risk adjustment and that how that affects the billing and the coding. And that was actually what they asked for. So I usually try to find out what their needs are, and I tend to stay in the. I can do coding. I can do billing. I really like the EM level, the office visits, the hospital visits. And then I really like anything doing with compliance, doing an audit, working with a special investigation unit, doing like the different UPIC audits and you know how to prepare for those and what to what to send and what not to send. Anything in that compliance bucket, I'm really, really good at because that's that's where my focus has been for the last probably 10 years. Okay. All right. Stephanie, you mentioned uh, that you speak at local chapter meetings as well. What, uh, what's your topic of uh, preference or is there something that you, that you're an expert at or specialize in that you'd like to share? Yeah. So far I've spoken to about like 20 chapters since the beginning of the year. So it's always wow. been great. Um, I always enjoy speaking about like the getting the value, getting the most out of your AAPC membership. Um, to talk about all the different member benefits. And I actually go into a live demo of the AAPC website so I could show the members where to find things. Um, but I also speak about compliance programs, the seven elements of an effective compliance program, um, some tips and tricks about EHRs. Um, of course, there's so many EHRs out there, but um, for the, one, the, just a general overview of what we should be looking out for, like cloning, and copy and pasting, things like that. So if you're interested in any of those topics, definitely feel free to reach out to me. Awesome. And you can reach them. I, I'm assuming you both have LinkedIn accounts. Yes. I would just, just speaking of networking, we did a, a, just a few minutes ago, like that would be a great way to connect with Stephanie and Lisa, reach out to them. I'm sure you can, um, uh, I'm sure they'd respond there, right? Absolutely. All right. Um, McChloe says this, McChloe Shanti, and I hope I said your name correct, McChloe, but I loved your comment. Um, she says, AAPC changed my life, and she's been certified, um, I think she said 10 years, 10 years certified. McChloe, uh, or McCole, how has AAPC changed your life? Let us know. I'd love to um, hear or see that story, and um, 10 years certified, and it sounds like you have a great career. Um, going for yourself. Um, Valerie Dorn, who we mentioned before, she, um, who is studying, I think it was the pathophysiology. She says she's a mental health counselor now and is making a career change. She's hoping to be certified by the end of 2023. Uh, and there are a few other comments from others saying they're hoping to pass their exam by the end of the year. Um, let's see here. And there are a few who are certified looking for that first um, job. And this is something we talk about a lot. And we actually have a new series branching off from the IMAPC interview series on, on YouTube um, called Starting Point, um, where we're interviewing those who are newly certified and found their first job. Everybody wants to know that secret to, to, um, to how that happened. But um, first off, check out our YouTube channel, go to IMAPC, there is a law, there's a library of interviews, and you can see that everyone's journey is different. And um, I think one constant theme is just um, going after it. Um, you might not be an extrovert, but you, um, but connecting with coders in your area and putting your foot um, forward and stepping into that uncomfortable space of just saying, hey, I want this as a career. What recommendations do you have for me? You can do that online as well. So I'd highly recommend that you guys um, do that. But making those connections, um, learning to see what other people are doing. Um, 
Stephanie, how did you get your first job in healthcare? My well, first, first you you did that. You said you did the receptionist kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, and did, did that help you break into coding? Coding took a little later. <laughs> But yeah, that kind of built my foundation because um, after I became the front desk, the medical assistant, I got into billing, um, like insurance verification. Um, but then after that, then I got into compliance and that's when the real coding came in because then I had to review the doctor's notes and make sure that they were um, coding correctly, documenting correctly. So it took me a little while to get to coding, but it's all, like you said, everybody has a different process. Well, uh, when did you become certified in that process? Were you in that receptionist job when you chose to become certified? Or did you, as you found yourself in different positions, you thought this will probably be helpful? Yeah, I was kind of, as, as I went on, um, then I saw like, yeah, I'm reading these doctor's notes. I'm reading their codes. I need to get certified <laughs> so I can prove that like I know what I'm talking about. Yes. And Lisa, your experience is unique. I've, I've spoken with a few who come from the clinical side of healthcare. How long had you been a nurse before, before you jumped into this direction? <laughs> 20 plus years. So, yeah. you know, very clinically driven. And I just happened to be placed in a position right next to the compliance officer's office. And I had some extra time and was happy to help with any project that they had. They had someone that was on maternity leave and that was the starting of this career as a auditor compliance guru. Um, nursing helped, it certainly helped, but it's not something, you don't have to be a nurse to be a successful coder or biller. I think as Stephanie alluded, I think anytime you can just get your foot in the door somewhere and get experience in each part of the revenue cycle, that makes you even better for when you get to that job. My last job, I was I was at my last job for 23 years. So that is a long time. And when I got out looking for a new job and kind of trying to change the career of the change the direction of my career, I was very surprised at how much more difficult it was than 20 years ago. So there's a lot of components and it, it can seem overwhelming, but there are certainly steps that you can you can do to be successful and I could probably tell you 10 things that I did to get this job, but you just kind of have to get out there. It's just whatever you put into it, whatever you want, you have to invest, you invest your time. So for a little bit, I, my full-time job was looking for a job and I ended up getting my number one favorite job that was on the list. So there are definitely ways to do that. And AAPC, we're trying to make a focus of that right now with interviewing and how to prepare to go into those interviews and how to just knock that interview out of the park and get your job offer. So do not be discouraged. There are lots of jobs out there and I see more opportunities for CPCAs now than I've ever seen. So um, just if you can dream it, you can, you can go out and do it. I would encourage you. Uh, going back to Valerie Dorn, our mental health counselor, who's making, who's hoping to make the jump to um, to coding, the, I think there are likely connections in your current job um, as a mental health counselor to coding, and we see this all over the place. Um, and I'm going to mention Sarah Reagan, who uh, her husband's a trucker, and she she has a great presentation where she makes that connection between trucking and coding and um, it's fascinating, it's super interesting. So Valerie, as you continue down this journey, look for those connections and you might just find your expertise coding in mental health possibly. Um, and so just keep those possibilities open and those connections, um, finding those connections may help you in finding that first job. Now, Michelle Martinez brings up an article. We posted this on LinkedIn from the AMA. We posted it on the, uh, on the APC LinkedIn page the other day. This is about Baptist Health in Kentucky. Um, and they are 
now um, training their current their employees in house who are not coders, but those who are interested in coding, they're training those um, um, individuals to be coders in their health system. And Michelle, I'm I just stumbled on that this past week. I didn't know that there was a program like that happening, but I'm going to look into that and talk with our team um, to find out if there are more connections like that. That'd be fascinating to see. And that that would be, if you're in the area of Baptist Health, a great place to get your foot in the door as a receptionist or in any way and express your desire to be a coder and, and maybe getting into that program. But I'll look into that more, um, Michelle if we can find more connections like that. Okay. Um, Valerie, again, our uh, mental health counselor, she asks, is it possible for your first job to be a coding job? Absolutely. And uh, I'm gonna encourage you, Valerie, again, I'm gonna put a link to this here. Um, our YouTube channel, the I am APC interviews. I speak with members every day who have made that jump. like. Um, I'll be posting an interview soon with um, a mom who has been uh, out of the workforce for a little bit, for a little while, but her pr prior job was working at Famous Dave's, um, the restaurant. And now she, she just got her first job as a coder. And um, it's fun to hear her story. Um, one interview that's currently in there, this is one of my favorites too, is um, Maddie Oaks Daughtry, who is a Broadway dancer. Um, and the arts is his background. And I'm putting this link in. Um, when the pandemic hit, you know, New York shut down and he, um, he looked online at medical coding and took the APC course. And there wasn't a lot for him to do during that time. So he hit the AAPC curriculum hard and got through it pretty quick. Um, and he's not only does he have a job as a coder now, but he also works part time as a teaching assistant for AAPC um, virtual classes. There's two. There's someone else like that. Um, Jessica Halliday, who I think Stephanie and Lisa know. Yes. She's amazing. I talked to her a lot. And she um, she was she worked in a bar. She worked like in that food service um, bar industry, did some social media. I think she did some bartending, um, pandemic kit, all of that shut down. She took APC, the APC course and is now working in that field. Um, you can find those guys um, on TikTok as well if you're interested in that. Um, the Maddie Coder, I think is uh, Maddie. And then Jessica Halliday, I think is coding in Memphis. But um, this amazing stories it is possible you you have to believe I mean I see it every day and we often online hear only the negative those who are struggling to find work but it happens all the time it is possible Valerie all right Stephanie Lisa any comments to my epistle there no and I I just wanted to add that AAPC also has like resources on their website for members um like if there's a medical terminology glossary, because I know our industry is always changing, there's new terms being added, or there's, we use a lot of acronyms too. Um, so that glossary is very helpful. Um, there's also a section on hot topics. So that shows like industry trends, um, any articles that are to help us keep on top of what's happening in our industry. So just also wanted to throw those out there too. Lisa, any thoughts on your end? I would just, really tap into all of the resources that AAPC has. And as I said, if you can dream it, you can achieve it. I tell people that all the time. I, I worked hard to get this job that I'm in now, but I absolutely love it. And it, it was worth the time that it took for me to get here. Yes. And if you, um, if you are currently certified, maybe have been working in your um, role, your coding role the last few years, you know, for a year or two, or maybe even longer, we do have a mentorship program that is amazing. And we connect you with, um, with a professional that is in the place that you want to be. And um, that's a free, um, a free service um, that we provide. 
Uh, so check that out. Um, I, I know some of the mentors, they're amazing people. And um, I think wherever you are in your career, I hope you have a mentor, someone you can reach out to. And that's what makes conference so amazing. I think HealthCon, just to have, um, you know, people find jobs at HealthCon, people make those connections that lead to different paths in their careers. You just never know um, where it will take you. All right. Well, we kind of took a um, um, took a left turn on the um, uh, favorite benefits. Lisa, is there a benefit that you think APC members should know about? I do like the mentor program, and I would encourage anyone who is thinking about becoming certified or who or who, who is newly certified to tap into that. I know that we have a lot of mentors that are just looking for people to work with. I'm one of those people. So, you know, it just gives you an opportunity to walk side by side with someone who's been in the industry and kind of help guide you along and kind of give some advice. And that is one way that I like to give back because I have had so many great mentors in my life that have that has been very helpful in my career. And that is one opportunity that I can give back to other people. So consider being part of the mentor program and then just sign up and then you're matched with a mentor and they can kind of help guide you as you move forward with a career in this area, coding, billing, compliance, whatever, whatever it is that you're looking to do. Or even sign up to just be a mentor instead of the mentee. Yes. That's yes. correct. We always yes. need yes. mentors as well. So if you've got experience that you can give to someone that would help them looking for their first job, that would be a great thing. Just sign up to be a mentor. I dropped the link to the mentorship program in the comments. Something you need to know is that you uh, there's a yellow bar that that has a link to the Mentor City platform, which we it, which manages our mentorship program. You will not see that unless you're logged into your account. So log into your APC account, go to the link that I posted, and then um, then you'll be able to get in and sign up for that. Um, Terry Davis says she's been certified for eleven years, and she wished she would have switched careers earlier. Love coding and love my job. Um, so thanks for sharing that, Terry. And I'm I'm trying to find. I'm just going through the comments here. Um, Sharon um, Benenson says she was a claims processor at Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Virginia for a long time. Um, then she was a business test analyst and was laid off, but um, she really learned to code in that time. So you know what may be a hard situation when you. Um, when you have a job and you, you're you laid off, but there we learn something from every experience. And I love that Sharon um, saw and, and benefited from the great things that she learned at her, uh, at that job that she was at. All right, so many great comments. Thank you guys for sharing those. Um, we're running out of time, but uh, Stephanie and Lisa, I'll, I'll see you guys next month. Yeah, we'll see you in Tennessee. Yeah, looking forward to that. It should be I, a lot of fun. I own zero Wranglers and zero cowboy boots, but I guess I could pick some up there, right? Of course, of course, you will be able to do that. And okay. one restaurant that you may want to check out is the Loveless Cafe. I did Loveless go there. It is, a, it, it is a very popular, very, very good place to go. So okay. try it out. All right, the, I'm typing that in Loveless Cafe, Nashville. And it looks like they've got some kind of biscuits Ooh. that are popular. Yes. They've got everything. Very okay. good, very good food. Anything in the carb genre, I'm good with. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. All right, well, Stephanie, Lisa, thank you so much. And thank you everyone for watching today. Hopefully um, you picked something up uh, from our discussion. Um, Lisa, Stephanie, stick with me just for a minute. Uh, for those watching, uh, just so you know, just a reminder that you can 
watch this broadcast um, on our Facebook page where you're watching it from now. It'll live there. We'll also put it up on our um, YouTube channel in the coming days. And if you're a podcaster, which I am, I love um, listening to a podcast when I'm driving or, or um, running errands or whatever. Uh, we have a podcast, the AAPC podcast. Um, you can listen to this broadcast, I am APC interviews, and um, get motivated and stay in touch with the APC family. So we will see everybody soon. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Bye. Have a good afternoon.